All right, time for a vocabulary exam. A vocabulary exam. Now, this exam, guys, is <laughs> this is going to be a hard exam. If you even get one right, boy, you deserve a what do you deserve? You deserve a hug. You know, if you even get one right, that's how hard this exam is. Okay, it's very advanced vocabulary, so I'll give you a hug if you even get one. So this is a multiple choice exam, okay? Do you know what multiple choice means? It means usually multiple choice exams have four, you know, four options to choose from, right? A, B, C, D, and you, uh, you circle the best, the best answer. Very often on these kinds of exams, it'll say choose the best answer. Choose the best answer. That's important because sometimes, you know, two or maybe even three, could be technically correct, but not the best. Okay, so so remember that, right? You, you need to choose the best answer. We're not talking about, you know, what could, you know, hypothetically be correct, right? There's, there's one in, in this exam, there's always one that is the best option to choose, okay? Uh, and for this exam, I want you to get out a piece of paper and a pencil and, uh, and keep track, okay? Keep track of your scores. After the exam, we're going to go over the, the right answers. Okay, and I want to know. I want to know uh, how many you got right and how many you got wrong. Okay, so let's take a look at number one. Are you ready? <laughs> Question number one. My heart is in blank within me. You might have thought I was joking, right? When I said it was a hard exam. <laughs> now, you're, now you're shaking in your boots. Shaking in your boots means... um. Now you're scared. Now, now you know this is going to be hard. Okay, so my heart is in tumult within me. My heart is in vexation within me. My heart is in depression within me. My heart is in stagnation within me. Hmm, which one is it? Which one? Now this is a sort of poetry, right? This is, uh, you know, this could be a line out of a poem. My heart is, uh, you know, is in one of these words, right? Sometimes, sometimes uh, poets, when 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 you read poetry, it has language like this. It's sort of des describing sort of the the state of your heart. You know, if your heart is is really like uh, really depressed or oh, did I just give away the answer? Whoops. I mean, if your if your heart is uh, you know, <laughs> I'll stop talking. I don't want to give don't want to give away the answer. Okay, so um, now if uh, if you need more time to think about this then uh, then hit pause and, and you can think about it however long you want. But um, we're just going to go to the next one. Okay, so if you're not ready, hit pause on all of these if you need more time. Okay, so question number two. I was blank about in the dark trying to find my keys. Hmm, I was walking about in the dark trying to find my keys. I was stalking about in the dark trying to find my keys. I was groping about in the dark, trying to find my keys. I was grasping about in the dark, trying to find my keys. What do you think? Which one is it? Walking, stalking, groping, or grasping? Hmm. Boy, that's hard. Four I-N-G words. Look at all of those. Sort of, uh, they sort of look the same, right? Well, there's one that is correct. So again, if you need more time, just uh, just click pause because we're moving on to number three. Okay, number three is Tina blank over the slippery rocks. Tina blank, Tina clambered over the slippery rocks. Tina vaulted over the slippery rocks. Tina slithered over the slippery rocks. Tina brandished over the slippery rocks. Hmm, wow. Another hard set of words. Wow. I wasn't joking, right? If you even get one, I hope you get one right so, uh, so that you get a hug. You know, that'd be great. But um, yeah, I mean, these, these are hard. So have you, made, have you made up your mind? Have you, uh, have you made your choice? Well, I'll give you three seconds, all right? One, two, three. Here we go for number four, okay? I got blank out of $1,000 got blank out of a thousand dollars. I got bamboozled out of a thousand dollars. I got hoaxed out of a thousand dollars. I got ripped off out of a thousand dollars. Or I got bluffed out of a thousand dollars. 
Which one is it? Man, that's hard. That's hard, isn't it? Well, you better have your answer because we're moving on to number five. All right, so question number five, which is also the last question on this exam. It's short and sweet. Well, maybe it's not sweet. It's short and uh, it's short and bitter. Maybe you think it's bitter because uh, these words are so hard. Okay, so that blank, my curiosity. Okay, that blank, my curiosity, that piqued my curiosity, that piqued my curiosity, that picked my curiosity, that caught my curiosity. Wow, look at those four words. That piqued, peaked, picked, caught. Hmm. That's a tricky one, isn't it? You better make your decision because we're going on to the answer. One, two, three, four, five. Ding, 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 ding. The test is over. <laughs> okay, you better, uh, you better uh, have, have written down your answers because here's the answers. Okay, my heart is in tumult within me. Okay, my heart is in tumult. Okay. Tumult, that means sort of your heart is in, um, sort of in a state of chaos, okay? It's sort of, you know, it's uh, sort of confused. It's just uh, sort of, I don't know how to describe it, right? We use the word tumult, you know, to describe that, describe that state of your heart, okay? Now, the reason we can't use any of these words here is because these words with I-O-N, they don't really fit in here. We would have to say, uh, my heart is vexed within me. Okay, my heart is vexed within me. Or you could say, you could say vexation is in my heart or my heart is full of vexation, right? Again, you know, my heart is in depression within me. It would be much better to say my heart is depressed within me or I have depression in my heart or depression is within me. Okay, stagnation. Stagnation, this word doesn't, doesn't really fit here. Um, stagnant. Stagnant means not moving. It's not, it's not changing. Like we use this word for, uh, for water. If water is not moving, like if let's say there's a pond, um, you know, pond water is stagnant. That means it's not moving. And very often when we, when we say this word, when we use it to talk about water, we mean sort of that the water, you know, you know, water that's not moving sort of gets a bit of a, gets a bit smelly right? It sort of gets maybe a bit murky. Murky means sort of muddy. It gets a bit smelly. It's sort of old. It gets sort of sort of old. So when we talk about stagnant water, that's it's usually not a good thing. We're, we're talking about water that's that's not fresh. So stagnation, you know, my heart is in stagnation. That would mean your heart is not changing. Your heart is, is sort of, um, I, I don't know, it, it doesn't really fit. So these three words sort of sort of don't fit in this case, okay? The only, the, the best choice here is my heart is in tumult within me. Okay, so let's go. Did you get that right? Or did you get it wrong? Okay, well, let's, maybe you got this one right, okay? I was groping about in the dark trying to find my keys. Okay, I was, I was groping about, you know, if it's dark, if there's no light and you're trying to find your keys, you can say I was, I was groping about in the dark. That's what it means to, to grope about. You're sort of feeling around trying to find your keys, okay? You can't really say I was walking about. You know, that, that doesn't really make sense. I was walking about in the dark. I was stalking. No, stalking means to follow someone. You know, if you, um, if you follow someone, if you have some, some plan or some, for some reason, if you're stalking, then that's not a good thing. Because stalking is actually a crime. You know, if you're, I think it's, I think it's a crime. I'm not sure exactly how, you know, how, how people, how it's like proven if someone is, but if someone is stalking someone, then the person who's being stalked can get a restraining order, right? They can go to the police and the police can, if they catch that person, they can say, hey, you're not allowed. How far is the distance? I don't know. Maybe you're not allowed within like, within like 50 meters of this person's house or you're not allowed to follow. Basically, it's, it's to protect the person who's being stalked, right? So stalking, <laughs> that doesn't really make sense here. Um, grasping, I was grasping about in the dark, uh, trying to find my keys. Okay, so, so grasp means to like, to grab. You know, we can't really say grasping about. You know, sometimes with these words, like when, when there are two words, they sort of go together. You know, sometimes in English, it's, it's hard to learn, but, but sometimes in English, two words fit together 
And, you know, if you try to put another word in there, it doesn't fit with that word, right? So with this word about, I was walking about, yeah, you could say that, but not in this context here, dark trying to find my keys. You know, you could say I was walking about, I was walking about in the park. Okay, the only one that really fits is groping. Okay, I was groping about in the dark trying to find my keys. Now groping is all, also has another meaning uh, to like, to like touch someone. Okay, on to number three or f is this four? I'm not sure if it's three or four. Okay, Tina clambered over the slippery rocks. Tina clambered. Now, now this word, um, you know, this B here, I think some people say clambered without the B. It sort of means, it means to climb or to, to sort of, um, to sort to sort of it's like a challenging you're in a challenging situation right so so Tina is trying to move over uh, some slippery rocks right so it's a bit dangerous so she's gonna she's gonna sort of get down and use her hands right so so she's going to sort of like clamber over the um, uh, over the slippery rocks so that's what that's what clamber means now like I said I think this B because it's, it's sort of hard because with the word climb you know, in the word climb, the B is silent, right? We don't say climbing, I'm climbing up the mountain. No, we just say climbing, right? So with this, you know, because it sort of has a similar meaning, you would think the B would be silent, but, uh, but it's not. At least I think most people pronounce the B. Clambering, okay, vaulted. Vault, that has a different meaning. Vault means to um, jump, like to, to jump fast. You know, vault, vault, like uh, that's an Olympic sport you've probably seen those like pole vault you know when they run they run and they put the pole in the ground and then they vault themselves over that bar right it's it's a really high bar right they go running with that that pole <laughs> and they vault themselves that's what it means to vault okay so so tina vaulted over the slippery rocks you know that wouldn't really make sense right <laughs> she's just not gonna vault over the the slippery rocks okay the next one is slithered you know, uh, slither, that's that's how a snake moves, right? A snake slithers. You know, we, we don't really use this word for human beings, right? Humans don't slither, only snakes slither. Okay, and the next one is brandish. That this word doesn't even doesn't even fit here. Right. So so very often on multiple choice exams, you know, you might have one or two that are just they, they just have nothing to do with anything right? They, they don't fit at all. You know, when I think of this word brandish, I think of a sword, right? Imagine if I, uh, if I pull out my sword, right? And I, I sort of, I brandish, I, I pull it out. That means I, I, I'm showing it, I'm displaying it. I am brandishing, I brandished my sword, right? So, so this word doesn't even fit here. So the only one is clambered. Tina clambered over the slippery rocks. How are you doing? Have you gotten, have you earned your hug yet? All right, number four. Number four, I got bamboozled out of a thousand dollars. I got bamboozled. <laughs> Do you know what that means? It's a funny word. Okay, bamboozled means like scammed. I got scammed or I got cheated. I got tricked out of a thousand dollars. It's sort of, it's, it's in a way, it's sort of like this, sort of like ripped off. I got ripped off out of a thousand dollars. But the reason we can't really say that is because of uh, this word here, out. I, th then it would be better to say, I got, I think it, it would be better to say, I got ripped off by a thousand, I got ripped off by a thousand dollars or something. It just sounds, it just sounds unnatural to say, I got ripped off out of a thousand dollars. And uh, for hoaxed, uh, hoax, hoax is a noun. Hoax, it's sort of a similar idea. You know, if someone's trying to, you know, rip you off with a scam, you can say, I, I'm not going to fall for that hoax. That's a hoax. It's, uh, it's sort of like a, it's a trick. It's sort of a similar idea, but we don't really use it as a verb. Okay, so we, we wouldn't really use it in this case. I got hoaxed out of a thousand dollars and then uh, bluffed. Now, now bluffed is a different idea. Okay, we use the word, we use the word bluff, uh, especially when we're playing poker. You know, if you're playing card games like poker, let's say, let's say you have really bad cards, but you want to trick the, the people into thinking you have really good cards. Okay, so you, you bet really high, right? You say, I'm all in, I'm all in. That means you bet everything you have. You put all your money in the middle, but really you have really bad cards. You're not going to win, but you're, you're just bluffing. You're bluffing, you're hoping your opponents fold. Okay, you're hoping your opponents fold. That means 
you're hoping your opponents give up and then you win everything, right? They thought you had good cards, but really you don't have good cards. Okay, that's called bluffing. Okay, bluffing. So that doesn't really that doesn't really fit in this case. Okay, so so the only one we can put in there is bamboozled. Smash like if uh, if you learned uh, the word bamboozled for the first time. Okay, so the last one is that piqued my curiosity. You know, if something if something sort of sort of sparks your interest, you know, then you could say that uh, that piqued my curiosity. I've never really been interested in buying an iPad because iPads are too expensive. But today in uh, Apple's event, they, they announced the new iPad Air and that's a lot cheaper. So that um, the lower price piqued my curiosity, it piqued my curiosity. Now I might think about buying an iPad. OK, so, th so that's what what piqued means now. Now piqued, <laughs> right? This is this sounds the same, but it's a different word, right? If, if something peaks, that means it hits its highest point, right? You could say um, the stock market peaked last month and uh, now it's on its way down. OK, it sounds like <laughs> they sound the same, but they're different, different words. OK, picked. That's a completely different word. You know, if you pick strawberries or if you pick if you pick some apples, you know, that means you pull the apple off the tree. OK, so so picked that that doesn't make sense. <laughs> picked my curious. And then the last one is caught that caught my curiosity. Now, now that doesn't work. You could say that caught my interest. OK, that caught my interest. But then we would use it with the word interest, not with the word curiosity. You know, sometimes in English, two words go together and two words don't go together. You know, you can't say caught my curiosity. You have to say that peaked, that peaked my curiosity or or that sparked my interest or that that caught my interest. How many did you get right and how many did you get wrong? Did you earn your hug? I hope I hope you guys I hope all of you guys earned a hug. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining me in this exam. Let me know. Do you want more exams like this? More challenging exams or do you want some easier exams? Let me know down there in the comments if you want easier or if you want harder and let me know what your score was. I'm interested to know how you did if you earned your hug or uh, or if it's better luck next time. Don't worry. I'll give you a hug next time. There's always a always second chance here at Mad English TV. Anyway, hope you guys have a great day wherever you are. And as always, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.